Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video. I'm Coach Spivey, joined my son. Jordan Spivey. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any more of our amazing science tutorial videos. And also, check us out at our website at www.fathersonarinterfaces.com. So you can catch more of our amazing science content and material. But without further ado, let's go ahead and check out our video for today and let's dive into it. So we're going to be looking at properties of solutions one on one. So let's do this. First and foremost, what is a solution? And it's a mixture form of one or more solutes dissolved in a solvent. And solutions are made of two parts. We have a solute, the thing being dissolved, for example, is sugar. And then we have the solvent, the thing doing the dissolvent. And our example would be water. So if we look at this picture over here. You notice the sugar is in this water and the sugar is going to be our solute. It's the thing that is being dissolved. And then our water is actually going to be our solvent because it's the thing doing the dissolving. And when our sugar dissolves into our water, we end up having a sugar solution that is a combination of sugar and water mixed together. Now let's take a closer look at water. And water is considered to be the universal solvent. Water is a polar molecule because it has a positive and negative end. So if we look at this water molecule right here, these hydrogen ends are positive while this oxygen end is negative. So that's what makes it polar because it has a positive and negative end. And then only other polar molecules will dissolve in water. So for example, table salt or sodium chloride. The sodium has a positive charge while the chlorine has a negative charge. So this is another polar molecule because it has a positive and negative end. And let's take a look at our example of salt dissolving in water. So if you notice, when we put salt into water, the water actually pulls apart those opposite charges because, because remember, opposites attract. And so that statement applies perfectly to this situation. So if you look at these no negative chloride ions, they are separated and they're attracted to the positive hydrogen ions in the water right here. And if you notice, here's that sodium ion. It has a positive charge, so it's attracted to those negative oxygen charges in the water right here. And here we are again. Here are our positive hydrogens, and then they're surrounding that negative chlorine. And then here's our negative oxygens, and they're surrounding that positive sodium. Once again, here's our positive hydrogen surrounding that negative chlorine right here. And then here's our negative oxygens surrounding that positive sodium. So they literally separated by its charges. And why? Because once again, those opposites attract. What about nonpolar molecules? And nonpolar molecules will not dissolve in water because they do not have a positive or a negative end. And they're considered to be hydrophobic or water fearing because they don't mix well with water. And that's why you get the phrase oil and water don't mix. So some examples of these nonpolar molecules will be oils, fats, wax, and greasy substances. So let's take a look at this picture right here. If you notice, here is the oil sitting up top, but then here's the water at the bottom. And notice that the oil and water, they haven't mixed together. Matter of fact, they've actually separated from each other. And the reason why we look at it on a molecular level, here's a negative end of that water molecule. Here's a positive end, here's a positive end. And so here's our other negative end, positive end, positive end for water molecule. But notice that this lipid right here or this fat molecule does not have a positive or negative end for these water molecules to separate and attach themselves to. So that's why the oil sits by itself right here in this picture and the water sits by itself because there are no positive or negative ends for the water to be attracted to. And then we take a look at our example right here. It says, I'm sorry, we just can't be together. Is it because I'm fat? Well, actually it is because it's fat because remember, fats do not have a positive or negative end for this water molecule to bond with. As a matter of fact, there are several types of solutions. And we'll start off with our gas to gas solution. And we're basically gonna be looking at air, which is a combination of oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. So if you look at our gases in our atmosphere right here, most of our atmosphere is composed of nitrogen gas. And we also have oxygen, carbon dioxide, and small amounts of argon. And then our next solution is going to be our liquid and gas, and that's going to be water and air. So if we take a look at evaporation right here. 
the sun heats up the water and causes it to evaporate into the atmosphere and that's what gives us our liquid in our gas solution right here and then our next one we have our gas liquid which is basically going to be sodas and you have carbon dioxide and water so here are so here's our gas molecules that are dissolved in our liquid now it's important to know that the colder the liquid the better these gas molecules are going to dissolve in which makes sense because people like their sodas cold and under pressure and when they're cold these gas molecules are going to dissolve better then our next one is going to be our liquid the liquid which is lemonade and iced tea and arnold palmer the famous golf player was famous for making liquid or making lemonade and iced tea solutions and they called these arnold palmer naming them after him now our next one is going to be solid to liquid and that's going to be sugar and water so here's a solid right here mixing our liquid which is going to be this water right here and remember it can be sugar and water it can also be salt and water but anything dealing with a solid dissolving into a liquid and then our last one is going to be our solid and solid and that's going to be copper plus gold and that's going to be 12 karat gold so this right here is considered an alloy because we have two metals that are combined together to make a solution. Now moving on to solutions and conductivity. And conductivity is simply a material's ability to conduct electricity. And electrolytes are solutions that can carry an electric current because they contain many ions. And in general, our electrolytes are going to be salts because salts have many positive and negative charges in them. So we're going to take a look at our three solutions connected to these light bulbs. So if you notice, we have this light bulb right here and it's connected by these wires inside of this solution. So let's look at this first solution right here. And this solution doesn't contain any ions in it. That means it has no positive or negative charges, which means it cannot conduct an electric current. And another way we can tell is because this light bulb is not turning on because there's no electric current flowing from this solution into this light bulb. And then if we take a look at our next solution, this solution contains a few ions, which means it has a few positive and negative charges. Another way we can tell is if we look at this light bulb right here, the light bulb does turn on, but this light bulb is very dim. Why? Because there are a few positive and negative charges. So this solution is carrying a very small electric current. And if we look at our last solution, it's containing many ions, which means it has many positive and negative charges. If we look at our light bulb, our light bulb shines much brighter than these other two light bulbs. Why? Because this solution is a strong electrolyte and it contains many positive and negative charges, which means it can conduct a very or carry a very large electric current. Now let's take a look at solubility. And this is the maximum amount of solute that can dissolve into a solution. The more solute added, the more concentrated this solution becomes. And if you notice, we have three different types of solutions. We have an unsaturated, saturated, and supersaturated solutions. So let's start off with our unsaturated solutions first. And this solution cannot have more solute added and the solute is completely dissolved, which means this is a dilute or a weak solution. And we can tell that by looking right here. If you notice, if we look at the very bottom, there is no more solute left. And the reason why is because in this, we have a 20% solute to an 80% solvent ratio. So that means we have a lot more solvent than we do solute. And the reason why we can tell is because there is no solute at the bottom. And then let's take a look at our saturated solution and it cannot dissolve any more solute and this will be considered a concentrated solution or a strong solution so let's look at this saturated one and it cannot dissolve any more solute and the way we can tell is because we still have small amounts of solute at the bottom that have not dissolved and the ratio for this would be more like 50 percent solute to 50 percent solvent so notice that this is more concentrated than our unsaturated solution then we look at our last one, our supersaturated solution. Notice that the supersaturated solution has a lot more solute than solvent. And the way we can tell is because if you look, we are larger, have a large amount of solute at the bottom. So this would be more like 70% solute to 30% solvent. And notice it becomes unstable in these crystals at the bottom form. Now we can add heat to this super saturated solution and then we can add more solute. But eventually when this super saturated solution cools down, then the solute will come out of solution and it will turn into a precipitate. So once again, if you look at these increasing amounts of concentration, that means we have more solute to solvent as we go further along. 
Now it's time for your check for your understanding. You're going to use your notes and your knowledge of the property of solutions to answer the following. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'm Coach Spivey, signing of my son, Jordan Spivey. And remember, if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel. And also check us out at www.fathersoninnovations.com. And I want to leave you with a quote for today that I really like. It says, the best way to predict the future is by creating it yourself. So make sure you create your own positive future. And like I always say, make sure y'all have a wonderful, awesome, positive day. Peace.